This is the McLaurin Olympiad 2018. I've gone so far back now that they don't even provide cover pages for these things anymore. So that's cool. Um, it's two hours long, just to give you all the information. Six questions, ten marks each. All the working is marked. You don't just provide answers. It's not multiple choice. Um, consider practicing on the Kaylee and Hamilton papers. Although, if you're practicing this far back, you're probably doing enough as it is. So maybe you don't have to do these as well. But these are good. They're just a little bit easier, but the same kind of idea. Anyway, question number one. Um, sum of squares of two real numbers. So that's going to be a squared plus b squared is equal to 15 times their sum. That's going to be 15 times a plus b. The difference between the squares, that's a minus b squared, is the same as the is, is the same as three times their difference. So three times a minus b. Um, as soon as you look at this, you immediately need to do this, um, of course, because you always do that when you see that. Now, just be careful here, because the objective is going to be to cancel out these a minus b's, so we can end up with 3 equals a plus b, which we can then start using to, to, to help us solve this. The problem is, is you have to make a note here that we cannot cancel a minus b if a minus b is 0, because... Like normally, if a minus b is 2, something times 2 equals 3 times 2, and that 3 has to equal that something, which is what we're saying here. But if this is 0, then we have 4 times 0 could equal 7 times 0, right? So if it's 0, we just have to make a note that we need to check that it's not 0. So I'm going to cancel it for now. And if um, a equals b, and therefore a minus b is 0, I'll go back and check that case later because it may be that I cancelled out solutions that, that did actually exist. But for now, we just need to plow on. We'll just make a note of this. Um, so a minus b equals 0 means a equals b. We'll make a note later. Anyway, for now, we'll just put that straight in there, and we end up with this. Um, of course, what we can do with this is we can say, well, uh, what I decided to do, actually, there's lots of ways to go from here. But if you square both sides of this, you get this. And then a squared plus b squared is 45. So you can just replace those two with a 45 on that side, take away and divide by 2, and now we have two quite simple equations, this and this to go with. Um, so now this is the simultaneous equation that I'm doing. Um, rearrange this one, maybe divide by a both sides, stick it in there. There's lots of solving this kind of quadratic in, in Olympiads, I've noticed. A lot of questions get down to a situation like this. So you should be very used to doing this by now. Times everything by a, it factorizes, which is nice of it, and you get a is 6 or a is minus 3. Um, going back to here, that of course means that b is either minus 3 if a is 6, or um, or, or you could use this as well, um, it doesn't really matter. But you actually just get the reverse um, solutions. So minus 3, 6, or 6 minus 3 is a, uh, is a solution um, to the two real numbers. Um, it's not the only solution, however, because we have to go back and check this case now, remember? We can't just ignore it. So now we check the case, what if a equals b? Um, and we'll just make a equal to b in all these, and we'll clearly just get 2a squared on this side equals 15 into a plus a, um, which is 30a. And over here, we'll get 0 equals 3 times 0, which is absolutely fine. So we just need to think about this. And again, we could just divide out both sides by a here, but if we do, we need to notice that a equals 0 is a solution, um, and therefore... Uh, b equals 0 as a solution, because in this timeline, a always equals b. And you can double check here, 0 squared plus 0 squared equals 15 to 0 plus 0, good, and this of course works as well. And Or, if a isn't 0, then we can divide both sides by a, and we get a is 15, but again, a equals b here every time. So b is 15, and again, you can check that that works, and we'll end up with these three solutions here. Cool, I think that's done. Question number two. Um, I actually struggled with this question quite a bit. I thought it was quite a tough one. Um, what I eventually decided to do was, okay, just pick a segment here. It doesn't really matter which one. They're not segments, are they? They're sectors, but whatever. Um, you've got three choices. Let's focus on this one. You've got three choices of how to paint this. Red, green, or... Sorry, is it green? Red, blue, and yellow. Red, blue, and yellow. Let's just make it red, but say that we've got three choices for that because it could be green or it could be yellow, and we've got to go through all of, sorry, blue or yellow. Um, and now I'm going to create three timelines in which all of these are red. And I'm and I'm going to say, well, here, what are the, which other one could be red? Well, it could be this one. And here I'm going to say this one could be red. And here I'm going to say this one could be red. These two can't be red, of course, because they're next to a red. So I'm essentially just going to go through all of them. I'm going to see how many more ways are there to complete this disk now? How many more ways are there to complete that one and that one? So how about this one more? Well, there are two choices for this sector here. You could make it blue or yellow. 
Let's just make it blue for sake of argument. Now this one has to be yellow because uh, first you think it could be blue but that makes this yellow yellow which can't happen. So that has to be yellow um, and now this has to be blue because of course it can't be red because you've used red, can't be yellow because it's next to it and now this has to be yellow. So you only get two choices. When you, when you start here there are only two more ways to fill out that circle. Either blue yellow blue yellow or yellow blue yellow blue. So we'll say there are two um, possibilities from this timeline and then we'll add that to this. Um, so if we put red here now, um, now let's think, well, okay, there are two choices for this sector, blue or yellow. Again, we'll just make it blue for now. This one has to be yellow in that case. And now here, there are another two choices. It can actually be blue or yellow again. We'll make it blue and then this one yellow. But that gives us four total combinations for this one. It can either be blue, yellow, blue, yellow, like this is here, or yellow, blue, blue, yellow, or um, blue, yellow, yellow, blue, or yellow, blue, yellow, blue. I think, I think I said those all correctly. So that's four choices in total. So there are two here, four here, so that's six so far. And here we can put an R there. We can't put R there or there, remember? So this is all of the bases covered. Um, and this is very similar to the first one. Think about this, this has two choices, blue or yellow, just make it blue. This has to be yellow because, sorry, this has to be, um, yeah, this does have to be yellow because if it was blue, we'd have to be yellow, yellow here, which can't happen. So that has to be yellow, that has to be blue, that has to be yellow. So there are two choices from here. So there are eight possibilities in total if you color this in um, red here. But of course, you could have made that blue or yellow. So there are eight times three total different combinations here um, to make 24 total combinations. Uh, and I hope I explained that that well. Anyway, question number three. Like I said, I struggled with that question a little bit, but I, I eventually found that method, which seemed to work quite nicely. Um, okay, so three positive integers have some of that, so a plus b plus c is that, and product this. Now, I immediately, I, I didn't even think about this, I immediately started breaking down 360 um, in factor trees. Now, of course, 36 times 10 is 360, but these aren't even three numbers, so this is irrelevant. Though it's worth noting, you could do 36 plus 10 plus one, because then those three numbers multiply to make this still, but they don't add to make 25. So I need to break them down a bit more. So I know 36 is six times six, which is two times three times two times three. So I'll just do that very quickly. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look very closely at all of the numbers at the ends of these trees here. I know I could break down 10, but I'm not going to yet. And can you find some way to combine the, the all of these numbers here into a triplet which add to make 25. You know, whatever, however you combine these, that they're going to multiply to make 360 as long as you use all of them. But can you combine them in such a way that they add to make 25? And after looking at it very closely, you might be able to find if you times, um, and I've, I'm actually immediately forgotten how this works. Oh no, I remember now. If you take these three and combine them, you get 12, two times two times three is 12. Then take the three, then take the 10. 12 plus 10 plus three is 25. Um, and of course, 12 times three times 10 is 360. And so we end up with a solution, right? Now, I can't see any more solutions using 10. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break down the 10 further and I'm gonna look for more solutions now. And we have to look even more carefully, although it's worth noting, you can't combine a five with a two because that gives you a 10 and you've already searched for the solutions that use a 10. So how about combining the five and three? That gives you 15. Well, that's kind of kind of cool. Um, 2 and 2 gives you 4, and 3 and 2 gives you 6. So you can make these three numbers using these two, 5 and 3 to make 15, 3 and 2 make 6, 2 and 2 make 4, and those added to make 25 as well. And, you know, you have about 20 minutes just over per question you can average. Uh, no, it is 20 minutes per question you can average. So don't be afraid to stare at this. I mean, I stared at this for a long time to make sure I hadn't missed a solution. Mm -hmm. Um, and it turns out that I hadn't, which was great. Um, but don't be afraid to stay at this for a long time. And I know it's not a very thorough s way of doing it, but when the numbers, when there are so few numbers to deal with and you've got 20 minutes to make sure you absolutely get it right, um, it is a valid method. However, the mark scheme or the, or the work solutions, I should say, provided a really interesting, um, more, um, s uh, more, uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, I can't think of the word, but uh, a, a method that's more, uh, it, it, it's less risky than this, right? Um, I honestly can't think of the word that I'm looking for. Um, but anyway, it's more systematic. Is that the word I'm looking for? Yeah, it's more systematic in that it, it, it really doesn't allow you to miss one. And, and what they noticed was, if this multiplies to 360, one of these things must be a multiple of five. 
So okay, just choose a to be the multiple of five. It doesn't it doesn't really matter, of course, because it doesn't matter what order you write the numbers in. So just say a is a multiple of five. Well, what multiple of five could it possibly be? Well, of course, it'd be five, ten, fifteen, twenty. It can't be twenty-five because that won't work. And twenty also seems unlikely. But five, ten, fifteen, and twenty are definitely worth checking. So what you just say is you say let a equal five, and you just check when you do that, so of course these two are going to have 20 and they're going to multiply to 72, you just check whether this has any solutions. And you do the same kind of quadratic solving we did in question one, where this becomes 72 over C, you put it in there, you form a quadratic which you can solve, um, and except, except this one doesn't solve with integers. And remember, you need all these to be integers. And to check it doesn't solve with integers, you just check B squared minus 4AC. And of course, that's the bit under the root in the quadratic formula. So that has to be a square number in order for you not to get a rational. Um, but you just check this, right? 20 squared minus 4 times 72 um, doesn't give you a square number. And so therefore, there are no institutions. So you say, OK, none from this. But then you just move on to A as 10, make these two equations, try and solve them, and go forward. And, and you'll get a solution for these two. You'll get a solution for A as uh, 15, I think, because we had that one earlier. Um, but you won't get a solution for A is 20, and of course not for A is 25, and then you just say that you're done. So that's a very system, systematic way of getting through all the all the, all the answers there, which I, I quite liked, but um, would never have thought to do, because I just immediately went back to tree. Question number four is incredible. Just in case you watch these videos thinking that I get all these questions right all the time, I absolutely don't. Um, question number four I just didn't know how to do, and I had to look at the mark scheme, and they did an absolutely horrific method that involved something that I was never ever going to do on video because it was just absolutely gross. Um, but then they, at the very end they jotted down, oh you could do this via this construction. And the construction was absolutely beautiful. So I was like, well I'm just going to do that then, aren't I? Um, so let's let's go through this question then. This this The method for this question is incredible. I love it. I, I'm, I'm annoyed I didn't see it because it is just so amazing. I would have been so proud of myself if I had. Um, but okay, so they draw this thing here with three squares on a right angle triangle. This is a right angle. Um, and then they draw three more squares which they haven't bothered to draw, so we're going to have to draw them for, for them. They draw three more squares on these segments here, so let's draw three more squares on those. Good. The combined area of the two equal sized squares is that. Now, where are the two equal sized squares? Well, if this is 90, this is 90. This is the same length as this, and this is the same length as this. So these two triangles are congruent, which means this is the same as this, and so these are the two equal squares here. Um, and if they add to make 2818, then that means, of course, each one of them is 1009. And now what we're going to do here, of course, is, 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 is we want to know the area of all of these squares together. So let's just call this area A and this area B. So not the side lengths, the areas. And of course, what links the areas of squares coming off of a triangle? Well, Pythagoras does. And a lot of people make the mistake. Pythagoras does not talk about the lengths on right angle triangles. It talks about the areas of squares, or actually any similar shape, that comes off of those triangles. So what Pythagoras says here is literally A plus B is 1009. If you don't believe me, um, Google or YouTube QI Pythagoras water, and you'll see them um, spin a wheel that puts that gets water from there and to shared equally into these two areas, because Pythagoras talks about the areas summing up to make the largest area. A squared, which is the area of this, plus B squared, the area of that, equals C squared, the area of that. So A plus B, plus, A plus B is 1009 here, which is good to know. Okay, but how on earth are we going to work out the areas of these two squares? Because this is not a right angle. Uh, and this is, of course, where I got stuck. And, and there's a beautiful construction you can do here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to um, get rid of these pictures for now. Um, it, it's kind of ignore this box. I, I think I forgot to delete it. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this triangle here, this triangle, and I'm going to rotate it just like so. And notice what happens if I do that. This length, of course, matches up with this length perfectly. This line, because it's rotated 90 degrees, is going to be a straight line from here. And it's also, because it's, of course, this length, also going to be the same size as this length, which means, you know, when I when I put this box that was here, uh, here, I can also put another A box there, because this length matches this one. And, of course, to complete a square coming off of this side of this right-angled triangle that I've created, I can actually put four boxes here. And so this total area here is 4A, all of this area. It's four boxes of A, so 4A. And so this area, again using Pythagoras, is 4A plus B. 
Again, no square rooting required because it just talks about areas. So this box here, which was originally here, is 4a plus b. And by a very similar argument, um, you can argue that this one here, I won't animate it because it was it took me long enough to work out how to animate that one. Um, this one here, try and picture it in your mind and try and draw it if you can. But this shape rotate this side, sorry, rotates to here. This one rotates because it rotates exactly 90 degrees, comes off at a straight line here, um, and is going to be this length is going to have two boxes of B on it, which can create a box of 4B. And then you're just going to have the A over here. And so this is going to be 4B plus A. And again, draw that if you can't quite see it in your head. But of course, this allows us to add up all of the squares. We've got 1009 plus 1009 plus A plus B plus 4A plus B plus 4B plus A. And what happens here quite nicely is you get exactly six A's and six B's. You can, of course, work out those are. But A plus B is 1009. So we just have another six lots of 1009 plus the 2018 and make 8072. Just an absolutely gorgeous method. I really, really liked it as soon as they pointed out. And I'm, and I'm cross that I didn't see it because it, if I had, I'd, yeah, I'd have been really proud of myself if I had seen that. Anyway, um, question number five um, is quite a nice question, I think. What I originally looked for, of course, was to try and cancel this with something above it. But it's fairly obvious that you can't do that when you realize to make this zero, you need to use n is a half. But n is a half doesn't make the top zero. So there's never going to be any cancelling going to happen here. So you have to think of a new way of doing this. And, and what I thought was, just because I didn't have any other idea what to do, is I, I just tried completing the square. Completing the square is, is an amazing thing that's often very helpful. And it doesn't take me very long to do it. So I just thought, OK, well, it's going to take me 10 seconds to try. Let's try completing the square. Um, I also wrote 16 as 4 squared. Because what I wanted to do was have the option of moving this 4 into this bracket. And of course, now that the powers match, I can do that. So OK, completing the square here, though, I halve this number, of course, take away the square of it, which is a quarter. I can combine these numbers to make 5 over 4, of course. And now, yeah, actually, if I put this 4 into here, that's going to make this just a clean minus 5. Right, so that's nice. But now I notice, again, actually, look at this and look at this. They're out by a factor of 2. So what if I did the same trick again, make this into a 2 squared and then move the 2 into here? Because again, these powers both match now. That gives me this. And now I'm now I'm balling, right? I'm, I'm pretty confident now that this is that this is going to help me out a lot because of this matching idea here. So, OK, what can I do? Well, I decided to expand out the top of it. So from there, we expand out the top. So that's quite cool at minus 10 lots, of course, because yeah, that that should be a plus 25, but it's not going to make any difference to this question. So I'm not going to re-record this video. I'm just going to point out that that should be a plus 25 because, of course, five minus 5, 2 negatives make a positive. It's not going to make a difference. What we can do here is we can split this fraction into 3 like this because, of course, now that the denominators are all the same, we it, it, working backwards, we could just put all the numerators together. Again, this should be a plus. You'll see why that doesn't make a difference. We can cancel um, one of these with one of those. We can cancel one of these with one of those. and We get this. And now, of course, for any n, for any n, this whole thing is going to be an integer, right? And the question is about when is this an integer? But this whole thing is going to be an integer for any n. So all I have to consider is when this is an integer. Because, of course, integer, and this should be a plus, integer is an integer, and integer plus not integer is not. So all I have to do now is I've reduced this entire question to when is this an integer, right? Which seems significantly easier um, uh, than, than this is. Right? So when is that an integer? Well, pretty clearly, it's going to be an integer when this at the bottom is a factor of 25. And the factors of 25 are, uh, are 1, uh, 5, and 25. Except be a tiny bit careful because you can also use the negatives, right? You can also use minus 1, minus 5, and minus 25. And then what we do when we've got all of those six labeled out is we just set 2n minus 1 to be all of those things and solve n for every single case. And we'll get these six solutions. I actually forgot when I first this, did this, I actually forgot about the negatives. But a nice thing I did right at the start of the question was I just tried some numbers here. And the first thing I tried was zero, which gave me zero as a solution. And then when I did these three and none of them were zero, I was like, oh, where did the zero come from? Oh, it's because I've missed the negative numbers and then I got the other two. So just be super careful um, that you don't miss uh, things like that. Um, and, and, and trying numbers to start with, I know it seems dumb, but just getting a feel for the problem, trying some basic numbers 
can be really helpful. It can give you both a feeling for the problem and it can help you maybe right at the very end in case you miss anything. Um, so yeah, good. Uh, question number six is, is, is also a really interesting. I mean, the reason that I do these papers is because the questions are always great. So maybe that goes without saying. Um, so we've got all this construction. So uh, let's just fill in all the information that it gives us. It tells us lots of things are parallel. So I'll just do all of that now. Um, it tells us that they all pass through Y, which I don't need to label anything, it's done that. And it tells us that PQ is equal to RS, which is equal to TU. Now, okay, so where can I go from this? Well, all of this stuff is parallel, so there's clearly going to be a lot of angles that are the same. So this one here and this one here are going to be the same via corresponding, because of parallel, parallel, parallel. Good. And so is this one here, actually, uh, corresponding as well. And then this one is going to be the same as this one, corresponding, which is the same as this one. And this one down here, same as this one, same as this one, corresponding. So we've got three triangles with all equal angles and a side that's the same. So it's really tempting to go, oh, these are all congruent. Amazing. They're actually not all congruent. Just be really careful because X is opposite the side here that we know. Z is opposite here and Y is opposite here. So they're actually not congruent um, because they're, they're sort of arranged wrong. Um, so what I decide to do, um, I was a bit stuck, notice how this question doesn't give you any lengths at all. And the moment a question doesn't give me any lengths at all, one of the things that I have in my mind is, well, okay, I can make one up then. So, I'll, uh, sorry, I called these all K, but I can make up that this length is one. Because again, they haven't given me any lengths, so I'm not messing anything up here. I can just make up that length things one. I can scale the whole picture so that this is one unit, and that's fine. And that gives me one scale factor, right? It gives me the scale factor from this triangle to this triangle is times by k. So this side is going to be k squared. Okay, so this is getting a bit messy, but um, I, I, I've got some hope here, because that means that this side is k squared, because this is a parallelogram, look. And that means that this side is one. And, and look at the question here. It's asking about PQ, which I've labeled as K already, AB, which is all of this, and AC, which is all of this. So I need some of these lengths, right? I need to know what AC and AB are. So I need to describe a lot of lengths here. Now, I can't make up another length because I've already made up one. So I had to swallow a pill here and be a bit brave, but I can call this um, here M. So I made up another letter and just hoped for the best here. So if this is M, the scale factor from this triangle to this one is clearly times by M. So this is KM or MK, it doesn't really matter obviously. Um, and going backwards, this must be K over M because K over M times M, this is the scale factor equals K. And now down here, this is the hardest one, but it's okay. In fact, you can also then transplant MK up to there and K over M over there. And then here, most difficult one, but it's not that hard. The scale factor from here to here is M over K, because this times M over K is M. Um, so, okay, this one here, um, working backwards, eventually you realize, well, okay, uh, this one's M as well. But using the scale factors now, this is K squared over M, because K squared over M times M over K, the M's cancel, K is cancelled down to a K. And now this can go over there. And now this looks horrific, but just be brave. It's question six. It's probably going to be horrific. And there's probably a nicer way to do it than this. But I was just brave. I said, okay, AC is K squared plus K plus MK. CB is K over M plus K plus K squared over M. And AB is one plus K plus M. So the right hand side is one over that, which is all of this, plus one over that, which is all of this, plus one over that, which is all of this. And again, this looks horrible. But there is hope. I can see hope immediately because look at this denominator and this one. If I just factorize out a k from this one and times this fraction by k over k, in fact, I just factorize, I just um, factorize out the k first. But if you times this one by m over m, you get rid of these two m's, which is good. And now look at this. This is now the same as this. So factorize out a k from that, times this by k over k, and suddenly every denominator is the same. I can just put the numerators together, and even better, this just cancels straight with that, and we get 1 over k, which is equal to the left-hand side, 1 over pq, which is defined to be k. And so I have my answer. Um, I thought afterwards, after I typed this all in, and obviously couldn't be bothered to change any of it, that there's probably a quicker way to get it by considering the big triangle, and working out a scale factor, because of course it's similar to any of these smaller three. Maybe you can get a scale factor from here straight to here, and you don't mess around with as much of this. But 
I didn't care, obviously. What I did worked out quite well, so I just went with it, and, and I'm obviously not going to do it again just to find a better solution when I've typed all this out and got the right answer, so I'll just leave it there. But I'll leave it to you to think, it. can, can, you, can you do a similar method to this, but tighten it up a lot by considering the big triangle all at once and maybe not having all of this separate stuff here? But I'll leave that to you. Anyway, um, thank you so much for watching, uh, for watching and I'll see you next time.